Rural villages and seaside towns across the nation are under threat. Urban gangs are moving in and selling drugs. Police are trying to tackle these gangs who are extending their drug networks from the cities into the countryside. The main issues that come with drug dealing are the violence. There is turf wars, there's drugs overdoses. You get kids attacking kids, uh, all from the same area, and it can become a very toxic environment. This is what they call crack cocaine. There's all sorts of names for it. Guy in Cunt, Guy in County, and you're Guy in Forest. OT, out there. Children as young as 12 are transporting and selling Class A drugs hundreds of miles away from home. Oh my God. This is autism, mate. We can't shoot. I have to back up here because I never know who you are. You can be a guy that's coming to rob me. This film goes inside this secretive world to reveal how it works and the battle to combat it. What are we going to take? One murder, two murder, three murders before somebody actually does something about it? The majority of the gangs are based in London. Their drugs are processed here before they are sent into the countryside. They predominantly sell heroin and crack cocaine. This is the white one. What they call crack cocaine. But the young ones that take up the country. This cocaine in a 2800 farm. It don't come down through no one else. No one get to cut it or anything. First guy come to is us. Basically, the purest is like ninety five percent. Oh, that's all. Oh, that's all. Huh? Is it quite fiddly? Is there a technique? Yeah. What? Oh, my blood. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. A white friend that I know told me that up the country. It's better, isn't it? Things faster, less good stuff, all of that. So that's why I just went up there for a weekend and just looked at everything. The first line to set up was very, very easy. It wasn't that hard. It was no one to compete with you. It's competition, you know. It's violence. If you don't stand your ground, then people just take your thing as well, innit? But they take your work and your work. I got from a school from our college. Never looked too bad for me. Out in the street. Like, this was the next thing that I know. I started cooking it when I was like 16, 15. I need to make some money, man. I used to do. So just sit around and just watch the man go cooking. And just learn from the best and all the different techniques in it. I'm just leaving these one to dry down on the kitchen roll in it. Yeah, pop, 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 hard now, man. This, 500 grand. Just by that. Cut it up. It would double over to nine or ten. This product is the best. And the people them that smoke it, they ask it for it, they're screaming for it. Whilst the crack is produced by senior gang members, it's often transported and sold by children as young as 12. They're less likely to have a criminal record and attract less attention from the police. I just work with the younger people because who's hungry? Younger people. Young one is 13 years old, 12 years old. If your head is ready, you're ready. At that age, just come to drop off and come to get some money. Do you feel bad losing young people? I don't feel bad. Every like, I don't feel bad. What do you think about people say it's kind of exploiting young people? Exploiting. So why the people and that we say why they don't help the young people? Show me what you're doing. You're not doing nothing. And some people say it's like grooming children, it's like manipulating them. What do you say to that? I don't grow no what society grown people. Just like it was grown me as well. If it was a way, I would look down this alley. If it was a way, I couldn't give it.
even know you, this Ali. Because it's not just me go to them. They come to me as well. But it's very dangerous. See what are we doing right now? Keep moving. Never stop rolling stone. And I'll stay on this too. It's money in there, man. The London drug market has become crowded. The increase of drug dealers means they have fewer drug users to sell to, so a limited amount of money can be made. To increase their client base, senior gang members go out to the countryside to identify new customers to sell drugs to. Once they have done this, they establish a base to sell from. This is usually the home of one of the new drug user customers. They pay them in drugs or cash. The taking over of the home to use as a drug base is known as cookering. Once the base is established, the gang employ young people to courier drugs up to the house and they use the home as a base to sell drugs from on a daily basis. Once all the drugs have been sold, another runner will courier drugs up from London to restock and take over from runner one. While runner two continues to sell drugs in the countryside, runner one returns to London and this cycle continues. Urban street gangs have been supplying drugs into county environments for, for many years, uh, not just from London, from other hubs such as Liverpool, Manchester, Birmingham, Bristol. However, what makes county lines different is the reliance on a, a branded telephone number, uh, which is used to market addictive drugs to the, to the user group, and the level of violence and exploitation that is now commonly taking place on a daily basis in order to secure those drugs to market. They're seeing increased levels of knife crime at the presence of firearms as part of the threat mechanism. Um, so that certainly spread that type of crime culture into a wider uh, environment. The issue with county lines is increasing, the violence gets worse and we've got more and more stabbings and, and assaults taking place. And so our role currently is to cause as much disruption and, and trying to get as many drugs and weapons off the streets as possible. Whereas local dealers don't tend to carry the knives, the, um, the London dealers will be more prepared to carry weapons. But whilst that is a new challenge, we, we won't back down from that. I get very frustrated that people feel that Cambridge is an easy touch to come and deal drugs in because it isn't and it's completely unacceptable and it won't be tolerated. We have a, a zero tolerance approach to drug dealing and we'll do whatever we can to disrupt the dealers um, and the people buying drugs as well. We've got lots of addresses to visit to give uh, Section 8 Misuse Drugs Act notices to and these are all addresses that we've previously identified as being susceptible to county lines coming and dealing from them. Morning everyone. We're going to start off this morning by obviously advising people that if they've had dealers in their house or they're using their house for dealing, we're going to be um, taking action on the occupants as well as the drug dealers. If they're vulnerable, we need to put things in place to protect them. But ultimately, if they're allowing their premises to be used, they've been warned once, so we need to be arresting them if, if they continue to do so. Just remember why we're doing it. It's not so much about prosecuting people, but it's about making it really difficult for the London dealers to get a foothold again and go into these addresses. OK, that's why we're doing it. We served a Section 8 notice at this address last year and there was a London dealer in there um, who received four years in jail for drug dealing uh, as a result of what we did. So the occupant had his warning letter, he's now well aware of where we stand with this. Morning, alright, can we have a chat? Yeah. You've not had any issues no. with people trying to come back here? No, and... no, no, it's been great. Brilliant, okay, yeah, that, been... that's what we want to hear isn't yeah. it at the end of the day? Yeah, cause... Yeah, you need a quiet life. But yeah, what yeah. I'm going to do is give you this letter. It's basically like the letter you got last time. Yeah. If it is found that you are continuing to allow your premises to be used in the supply of controlled drugs, you'll be considered for prosecution and we'll inform your housing provider who may well take tenancy enforcement action. And just a reminder that if you are going to use the defence of duress, i.e. they're forcing me to do it, you need to tell the police at the earliest opportunity. So it wouldn't be sufficient for the police to turn up, find a load of dealers in here and you go, oh, officers, I've just been... Is that fair? That's for you. I mean, by all means, keep that and show the dealers that. OK, well, we'll leave you to it anyway. Thanks for your time. See you soon, mate. Cheers. North and East London is where we're finding a lot of um, 
gang nom- nominals are coming from, but equally now we're seeing more and more from the local areas such as Bedford, um, Liverpool, Manchester, we've had some. Um, Birmingham. Birmingham, yeah, but predominantly it's um, sort of the North London area. Last year we had a 14-year-old male who had quite a large amount of drugs secreted on him and the reason he got into it is because his brother got arrested, got sent to jail and had loads of drugs obviously taken off him. Um, the dealers came up to the 14 year old brother and said, This is your brother's debt, uh, now you've got to pay it back for us. So, you know, we've had a 14 year old basically forced to sell drugs because his brother owes money. Yeah, growing up very quickly, these kids are, they've been forced to grow up very quickly, and it's, it's very sad. Mr A and his gang packaged the crack in London before distributing it into rural areas. In all, this tree and that tree, seven and a half grand. The burn in it, yeah, is just a ceiling up. Yeah, so make sure it doesn't come out of plastic. And also, you don't want your uniform as well. You get me? Money's worth the risk, you know? Providing food on the table is worth the risk. It's not saying people enjoy me, it's just like a good job. Disadvantage to a lot of people, yeah, they've got no other choice. If you want to criminal records, it's not easy just to go and get a job, you know. So do you feel bad about selling it at all? Oh, uh, no, no, I'm not saying that I feel bad. And like I said, there's not many opportunities for a lot of people. I have people getting on me in a week for the whole I could probably give someone better than that. Certain way, they're just new to this, they'll start you off with a 200 pound, 300 pound, 
also in the same fleet. And he sent me out to camp for like a few weeks and he come back to you for hours and I stayed down there as long as the packets were there. Like three weeks, two weeks, you're not losing the to come back. Imagine the chat right now, you get me? Chat right now, yeah. You get me? Yo, my brother. Man's gonna send this to you now, so chief. Cool down, man. This is 500 pound worth of crack, you know. It's just working, 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 consistently working, working, working. Make sure the food's on charge, make sure the food's up around and make sure you're not for sleeping with the food you need. You don't miss that call. Yeah, all this one's around. All that. Done. Alright, go blast that, you know? In country, it's very dangerous. I have to pack out a blade, because I never know who you are. You can be a guy that's come to rob me. Can't put my trust in nobody. But if it's on edge, where I'm with the bosses and that, I've been like the trappers. Trapper is a gun. It's for anyone that tries to take you from like a little baby. Like, they try to say, you're scared, you're doing nothing. And when that both of them are prepared for the way about me being taken away from this, they don't say nothing for you to other people. All the rules of love no one. And be fearless. And show no love. The only love is that love for the people that bring you into this game the people that are still in this game with you, clapping alongside. No love is for people that try to disrespect you. To take you for a waste, man. What is that? Simple. The order is just pure love for them. Not really too more than my family, because obviously you have to respect your mum and your dad and you up. But for the street wise, yeah. They protect you really. I would say something. Yes, sir. It's not simply more than in his family. It is family. Social worker Tanya, not her real name, agreed to speak to us about the lack of support in her profession for young people who were being recruited. She only agreed to talk to us on the basis that we would not reveal her identity. It's easier if you have younger people because they're easier to manipulate. Social media, Snapchat, Instagram has made this lifestyle attractive. Some people in drug dealing put up particular photos of their lifestyle, the good moments, because they know that attracts young people. They're not aware of the manipulation used behind social media. They're out in a crack house and they're being taught that mum doesn't need to know where you are, where the new family will look out for you. Out of the young people we're working with, easily two thirds have either previously been involved in gang cunts, um, they're considering um, doing it in the future or they're currently involved in it and they want a way of getting out. It's black, white, it's all different cultures. Anyone can get involved when it, it comes to going country. Of course, you have the most vulnerable groups, so the children that are in care and in children homes, of course they're easier to access. But it's hitting the middle class children because people that are distributing drugs or part of county line behaviour are this day and age. They're in college, they're in university because it's a new level, they understand you still got to have education. The amount of parents I've come across that simply don't know is, is incredible. But I've worked also with some parents that are collusive. Your son has left school. Your son has no GCSEs, he has no job. And he brings you a 32-inch TV for Christmas. And we have parents saying, thank you, thank you, and taking from their children with open arms. But no parents stop and ask, where did you get that from? Young people get lured into this because they're thinking of high sums of money, but they don't realise they're putting themselves in real risk. You only have to be robbed once. You only have to be arrested once. And then you've lost the drugs, now you've created a debt. What if he lost his drugs? So like someone robbed him or something like that, would he have to pay that? Mm -hmm. You lost it, you don't just lost it. Mm -hmm. Is this what you're saying? So where do you lost it? That's my question. If you reach there, yeah, you shouldn't cut the whole of it on you. Yeah, so where did you lost it? You're not talking to no idiot, you know, King. So 
if you come and tell me you lost it, people need to tell me why you lost it. No. How did you lost it? It's not hard to detail whether it's someone's lying or not, or, you know, there's a bit of a misplay going on there, and I'm not hard to detect it. But if it's someone that's trustworthy, then, you know, he still come out of his wages for his other, you know what I mean? The issue is bigger than what people think it is now. When you're seeing posts about missing children, a lot of the times they're posted in crack houses. And the reason why you're not finding them is because they're not based in London. The statutory agencies are just not able to find the people yet. We became aware of it years ago. Um, um, that's because some of our young people were turning up in places outside of London with no viable reason, and it was slowly unravelling. The only sad thing was, a lot of the agencies, a lot of the policy makers didn't believe it. I realised very much that social work was outdated. It's a very respected profession, but it's not moving at the time. When it comes to county borderline stuff and missing people, this is beyond your job. This is a specialism. Missing people should have a specific team in social work, not your social worker should be responsible for that, because at the end of the day, she's just skipping through the cases. Some people that I've worked with Statutory organisations from police, social services, they're just not people you should trust. And they've been taught that from young. Definitely don't talk to social services, they're going to take your kids away. Community organisations have a better advantage because on a day-to-day, -day, they're seeing these young people in their communities, in comfortable settings. There's no power dynamics, so they can pick up if something's going wrong, if they're mixing with the wrong crowd. Statutory, we catch things at the end. When they're on the verge of their life is really going down the drain. That's too late. We're ex-offenders. It's a predominantly ex-offender-led project, so we can relate to the clients. We are positioning ourselves as credible people that that young person can trust and talk to. We're in a situation where all of the services are being cut back and nobody's owning the problem. So the people in the country are saying, well, they're not belonging to us, send them back to London. The people in London are saying, well, they're not offending in London, so let's keep them out there. And there's this whole, like, actually, who owns it? Who takes responsibility? Or don't we actually care about young people anymore? It was uh, 2015 when I first became aware and I was completely appalled. I mean, it sounded like something out of the wire or something, you know what I mean? Out of a TV program. It was crazy. I thought, is this really going on? People in power over the last seven years or so haven't been too interested in what's going on to kids in inner city areas. If they were sort of, you know, blonde, floppy haired, middle class kids selling drugs hundreds of miles away from home, I think there'd be a much bigger reaction. It's pretty bad out there. We know from when the higher-ups have occasionally been caught and their phone records are gone through, they find chilling messages about the young people. This kid's rubbish, get me another one. I want one in school uniform. They basically want to use the young people as pawns in their own money-making. And if it goes wrong, they're completely expendable. If this goes unchecked, it's got the potential to be the next big grooming scandal, the next Rotherham, the next Oxfordshire. Um, so it's crucial that we get on top of it now before it gets out of control. Joe has mobilised councillors from 21 other boroughs to pressurise the government to crack down on older gang members who are exploiting children. Today, he and two of the councillors have a meeting with MP Sarah Newton. She has a brief to tackle gangs, child exploitation and county lines dealing. We're a cross-party group, councillor uh, Elian Weston from Haringey and councillor Jonathan Cook from Wandsworth which is a Tory borough, and um, we're going to have a little pre-meeting to talk about our strategy and what we want to get out of it today. We've noticed recently um, young people turning up in Scotland. The concern around police for me is yeah. how do we share information without having to chase it? The responsibility yeah. falls on someone to chase that yeah. information, yeah. and it's not quite clear who or where. So we've just come out of the meeting with the minister. Um, I feel a bit frustrated because whilst she seemed to understand the issues, um, they were relying a lot on their current response, which I don't think is, is working. 
I'm going to need to work very closely with the London boroughs and also with the national children's charities uh, to keep the heat up under the Home Office. Always delighted to meet with council leaders. You know, we're not, we don't have all the answers in government. This is all about a partnership. Local authorities, the NHS, the voluntary sector. It was a really constructive meeting. We agreed on a great deal of things together and some further actions that we're going to take. At the moment, it still feels to me like the, the gangs are winning this. Um, and until we have a real commitment at national level for everyone to work together effectively. Um, I, I can't see how we can reverse that. Closing down those lines, closing down those opportunities to sell the drugs is really important and I'm really pleased that we've secured an amendment to the Digital Economy Bill that will do just that and we hope to bring those measures into force later this year. There are still young people right now as I speak all around the country dealing drugs from trap houses. They're still vulnerable and when they're arrested, they don't get the response they need. And that's what we have to focus on. You do feel sorry for some of the youngsters, but equally, a lot of them are making a choice to do this, and they see this as a way of making money. We arrested a, a male who was known uh, in a gang in London, and he said to us in custody, he said, Cambridge is the easiest place in the world to deal drugs because you've got so many drug users here. And he was quite sort of brazen about it and said, I've been doing this for months and months and months in Cambridge, undetected. This is a female who we've had lots of dealings with in the past. Um, she can be quite manipulative. We'll do one at the front, one at the back for these sort of addresses because someone is distracting us at the front door or being particularly difficult. It gives someone more opportunity in the premises to either arm themselves with a weapon or, or dispose of evidence such as drugs. Ah, it's lucky. Come see Lisa. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to go in the back. All right. That looks promising. Hi, Lisa. You're right. Oh hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. It's all right. It's all right. I just want to talk to you. Look. Oh my God. Your friend's just coming, I think, round the back anyway. Can I come and have a chat with you rather than no, st standing in your no, doorway? I'm redressing my leg. Hang on, girl. Pain there in my mouth. Can you come yeah. back? Yeah. No, Lisa. I need to come and talk to you now. Look. Well, I'm not letting you in, yeah. Please. Right, Lisa. I'm in the middle of something. Look. Lisa, you have previous, leg. you have previously had people here dealing drugs. I've got a girlfriend here. Right. You've previously had people dealing drugs here, so therefore I'm concerned now that you're not letting me in. No, it's not because right. of that. It's Lisa, because I'm don't. My leg. Don't be embarrassed, okay? No, I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm redressing my leg. You yeah. can come back and talk to me. No, 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 no. It's happening now, Lisa. For your welfare, I'm, I'm going to be coming in, okay? No. Because I'm concerned. I am not letting you in because of my leg. Lisa, move out the way. No. Lisa. Lisa. Why? You haven't got a warrant. Lisa, what I don't need a warrant. Move out the way. My leg. I'm not trying to hurt you, Lisa. That's not no. what I'm trying to do. My girlfriend's here, for Christ's sake. Right, we found drugs. My colleague, Girdles, was at the back door here and he said he's seen the dealer come out of the house and run back in again and quickly shut the door. But he said he was doing something around the shed here. So we've had a look around and slipped underneath the shed. Pop down here was the, was a little, um, where's the phone? Stuart, have you got it? Yeah. Was the, the phone was in a little compartment underneath the shed and that's completely dry. And it, that's what we would call a burner phone. So it's basically a cheap throwaway phone and that will no doubt have drug supply messages on it. It's been hidden here for a reason, so that will be key. In the property then, my colleague Andre has then found in the lounge area where everyone was, a, um, a small bundle of what looks like Class A wraps. This knife was hidden down the side of that sofa, um, which one would assume is for a weapon uh, for protection. And obviously you've got your cling film here as well on the side. The dealer's been found hiding upstairs. He's a 19-year-old from South London. He's not a victim of trafficking, but he has been reported missing. So obviously you've been arrested already, haven't you? You've been saying supply. We're going to take you to the police station shortly. We're going to deal with you, right? Yeah. So I've been arrested. You were arrested when we came in? Oh. For being concerned the supply Class A drugs. And I cautioned you, do you remember? Yeah. Excellent. You get me home. Get you home, well, I don't know about that. Lisa, listen what I've got to say. Okay, you're under arrest at the minute. 
for allowing your premises to be used in the concern and supply of Class A drugs, OK? So you do not have to say anything may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned, something which you may later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. OK, you got any questions, Lisa? No, you understand, yeah? Lisa, pop your hands up for me. When she came to the door earlier, she could have said to me, oh, thank goodness you're here, I've got a drug dealer in my house, and in which case we know she's vulnerable and she desperately wants our help. The female lied to us and said, no, no, there's no one else here, it's just me and my girlfriend who's coming back, who was the girl that was at the back of the house. Um, I gave her every opportunity to tell me there was someone here and she lied and said there wasn't. So as far as I'm concerned, she's not vulnerable. She's vulnerable in terms of she's a drug user, but she is concerned in the supply of these drugs because she's allowing him to do it. And she didn't at any point say that she um, knew he was here. And equally, um, she's given us conflicting stories. So the lad has told me she's his auntie, which is a very common story they come up with. But yet the female has told my colleague here that she is his friend. and black wraps there, which I strongly suspect are the white ones are crack cocaine and the black ones are heroin, um, just in that corner there. There's more down the side there, look. Yeah, there is, yeah. We knew there'd be a decent amount of drugs here because he only had £160 on him, which would equate to about 16 wraps. And dealers tend to come up from London with what, what's known as a G-Pack, which will have £1,000 worth of wraps in it. And as we're finding now, there's quite a lot of Class A's been seized here. There's a bundle there. Um, which Andre's found, and it looks like a small bundle, but actually it's so tight, tightly wrapped, there could well be between 50 and 80 wraps in that bundle. And equally, I'd say there's probably a similar amount here. The drugs expert will weigh them all and will test them all, but I would say you're probably looking at between 700 pounds and 1,000 pounds. That's been a doubly bad day for this individual because not only is he now in police custody um, and risk going to prison for what he's done, he will now also owe all of these drugs, all of this cash, to someone higher up the chain. So he's now going to be in debt to the drug, the drug line, which means, unfortunately, when he does eventually get out, he'll no then have to work that debt off by dealing drugs or committing another crime. It's possible we'll see him back in Cambridge, but equally, he may be moved somewhere else where his face isn't known. He may go down to Hampshire, he may go, he could go anywhere. Um, they've got drug lines all over the country, so what they do is they tend to, if a dealer gets picked up in one area, they'll ship him out somewhere else, and they keep swapping them around so that the police don't recognise faces. Right, let's call it a date. Cheers, mate, see you soon. The drug dealer we had, his phone was dead and ran out of battery, so I think it's quite possible this has been uh, the replacement phone that is, is owned by the homeowner. So I think the drug dealer is using the drug user to send messages out to her drug user contacts, um, and then I expect people are coming to the address and buying drugs from the address. So it's got the names on there of everybody. We recognise some of them. We do, yeah. Uh, we recognise a lot of these names, actually. The drug dealer has obviously said to her, go through your phone, advertise our drugs, and that's what she's done. So this shows again that she's not vulnerable and being made to do this, that she's, she's clearly involved in it. 10 for 50, 5 for 25, and 3 for 20 shop closing this week, clearance. Literally, it's like, a, it's like marketing, mm, isn't it? Yeah. It's not uncommon for people to literally go around with little scraps of paper with a telephone number on and be giving it out to the drug users. And yeah, you know, we've even had drug users advise us that they've received notes through their doors from uh, scraps of paper with a, a drug line on a number. And it, for the drug users, if you're trying to get off cracking heroin and someone is then posting numbers through your door, it becomes very tempting to take that up. Margate is a really wonderful place to live and work. Uh, but one of the things that does impact us is county lines. Kent Police are part of a multi-agency task force set up to combat county lines dealing. Gang members will look for vulnerability and hang outside places where um, people are particularly vulnerable receiving drug treatment uh, or the likes of job centres. The police work with 13 other agencies, including Kent Fire and Rescue Service, the council, probation and the NHS in order to tackle this. As well as enforcement, they also protect the jobless, people with learning difficulties and health problems. We start paying the visits to these, these vulnerable people um, for their protection. That, that's, that's what it's all about, it's for their protection. They are, 
Um, a lot of times they're willing victims, but they are victims nonetheless. We'll identify their needs. They can be housing needs, they can be uh, benefits needs, they can be drug or alcohol dependency needs. A lot of the time they're initially resistant um, and sort of non-compliant with our visits. They don't want us in the place. They don't want police attention at all. It's the police, just doing a welfare check. <coughs> Nothing you want to report to us or anything? No? Bye-bye. The next address we're going to is a is another cuckooing victim, uh, previously housed in Margate. We've um, instigated a move for him because of his uh, vulnerabilities. We were able to instigate that by uh, tying him with a housing officer for his, his previous property, providing evidence um, of the antisocial behaviour and drug dealings that had been going on there and uh, the move was uh, the move happened quite quickly for him. In fact he was being cuckooed by the London uh, drug dealers. There's also local uh, drug dealers that have been linked to his address. Oh uh, yeah. Alright, thank you. So you, you've been all right over here, you've had no, um, no, no issues over here? No, 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 no one, one at all, all the vocals have stopped. At the start when I put, I put a friend up on my couch for a couple of days and um, I went out up to hospital for a couple of days or in hospital when I come out and it was in my flat. You're not telling those people that you're over here? No one knows, yeah. Good, let's, let's try and keep it that way. I am, yeah? I'm going to. Well, if it's all right with you, yourself, Melvin, we're going to carry on doing the welfare checks on you. Yeah, of course I want you to, yeah. 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 Uh, just make sure you're right. Yeah. Good. Yeah, okay. I'm fine. Yeah. Terrific. Could you mind me asking if you were using drugs at the time or was it, did they Sorry. target you because you were using drugs? I wasn't using drugs at the time, no. I've been good as gold for over 10 years. So was, yeah, I've, I've had sort of many strokes, so that, you know, I've got heart problems and that, and it was a real constant worry every day. It's nice and clean. Yeah, I'm not going to overcrowd it with that perch or nothing. I'm just going to keep it, you know, and no, no smoking in here. Smoke in the kitchen. They were aggressive people. I've been physically pushed around and, that, and loads of things taken off me. All sorts of threats, you know, from burning the flat down to um, stabbing me and you know, I had it, you know. Fire bomb the flat, I mean, I had petrol put from my letterbox. I had one time I had, I had a gun put to my head. It's, it's, it's a lot of money involved. That's why they, 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 they're so ruthless, they don't care. One time I saw a £14,000 carried out in my, my kitchen unit and I was told to get out of the way, you know. It was just a horrible experience. I was scared to and the officers put a panic alarm in and everything for me. I even asked the officers, just get me out of here and put me in anywhere, just get me out of here. I just wanted to go. And the last resort was me just taking a few possessions and walking out and going on the streets. I just wanted everything to be over, uh, basically. That's all I wanted. Truthfully, suicidal. I'm pleased anyway. Yeah. I, I really like it here. Yeah, terrific. I mean, you helped me a lot really getting it, so... Yeah, well... I ain't gonna let you down, you know what I mean? It's yeah. a new start. It is. Yeah. Massive weight lifted off my shoulders. I mean, now I'm, I'm away from all that. It's just, it's lovely. It's like I've got my life back again, you know? How I wanted it. OK, we won't take up any more of your time. All right. As well as working with people involved in County Lines dealing, Junior also goes into schools and colleges to warn about gang recruitment. And you see, like in the newspaper, young people are dying, young people are getting caught up in stuff. It's over their heads. And I can tell you right now, there's other people travelling out further than we are. They're going to get involved in um, County lines, they're going to get involved in drug lines. They may not even realise they're getting involved until they're way over their heads. Good afternoon, everyone. You're right, yeah? Good afternoon. Good awesome. Afternoon. My name's Junior. Um, this is one of my fantastic colleagues, Daisy. I mean, I've seen people driving around Mercedes mm. at 19. Rolex watches. I don't see myself rolling around in a Mercedes or a Rolex watch. Mm -hmm. so. It's fast, though, yeah? 
college, university. This whole thing about the amount of money is in the game is the big, biggest gassing up there is out there. Like being gassed up, it means like you're just believing. People are getting hyped up. They're being, they're getting drawn into stuff, and they don't even know what the reality is. If you've got five people working for you, that sum is multiplied by five. That's a whole load of BS. If I give you, say that you've made two grand profit, divide that up between the five. Would you divide it? Would you keep more fees? Because you've got bills to pay. So look, let's do it to an hourly rate, yeah. Yeah. So, how am I working that up? So, £400, 400 divided, divided by... 45. 48, 48 hours. £1.99. £1. £1. £1. £1. £1. £1. £1. £1. £1. £1. An hour. An hour. How are girls treated in this thing? They're objectified. A lot of the time, they're used as just sexual objects. They're used for their bodily parts where they can hide drugs, like, literally. Nobody's made into Tony Montana's wife or anything like that, honestly. Yeah, in how it goes. Even if one of these kids like, takes away one thing that I've said, that can potentially save their life. But some young people are prepared to risk their lives every day. SK is still up in the countryside selling crack and he's on his way to meet the local rural gang who he supplies. Every time I go country, I used to just hear the neighbour next to the neighbour just be like, ah, oh, you had these kids beating in my door, having fights. Just like that, made me think, oh yeah, did you so understand? So then I pulled them up one day, gave them 1.5 hours, gave them just shot that, told them I'll be right next week. Kept doing that consistently. Once the gang built up trust, they went from running for SK and his crew to buying drugs from them so they could set up their own drug lines. When you're doing it for yourself, you get to keep that, all of the profit. So now that's, that's where the peas are at. On the moment, we earn five dollars each. They need to consistently drop me meat teeth every time I ask them for it. No oof that box. No, I ain't got that yet. That's it. What my view and I want it. I'm selling like half ounce of crack a time, then we'll go back to them with the re up, get all the feedback, take the profit, go get some more crack soda, get more. It's a repeating cycle. So I just have to do it all, bag it up, everything, how much it weighs up, but to keep low key about all of it. Just got three yards, just a couple man at each yard, just running it, bagging it up. And then when it's all bagged up, come drop it to us, we go drop it everywhere. I only drank it about 14 to 20, anywhere between there. I used to feel better about myself knowing that I put what I did in all sides, I put myself clothes and money, I could do that. But isn't there other opportunities you could do? Yeah, there is, but there's not that shows enough money like this for some of our age. It's just that they can help the family, in it, in case the family needs help with bills and all of that, you know. My parents are supporting us with what we do, seeing as we support them with the money that we bring in. What's the hardest thing about this? Just don't give up. It's hard. Just try to steal that. If you look at the pokey there, someone come and try to sign when you rob you, just flip it out and poke them up, bruv. Just fucking shank, bruv. Knife and just flip it out and stab them. Do you feel bad about selling drugs like here? I don't feel bad selling drugs to users, but that's their choice. If they want to take it for that in their body, that's their choice. We're basically like a pharmacy. They need this. You trust, we give you the antidote. Hold up, hold up. I take out the thing as well. Take out the thing. Back it up, hold it. Oh, that's perfect, man. This right here makes what? Let me see that, like, what? 200 pounds. I fuck it up or fuck it up. You don't even take that long to solve stuff like this. Because you know you got your clients. They know when you're coming up and they know where to wait for you. And what about people who say like young kids are being groomed or influenced in a bad way to do this? They're you? not being groomed. Yeah. Young kids being offered money and they're taking it. They know that the mum needs this. In my opinion, if we, if we all keep low and we learn new stuff, then the police won't be able to keep up with it. Right now, we're still, we're still here, aren't we? One, two, three, live in the flesh. We're still here. We're free. We have freedom. We're out here. Do what we do best. 
Can we even yeah, that's right. we If nothing is done, the gangs will increase the volume of activity. There'll be more lines running in market towns and seaside towns. There'll be more competition for those lines, so the level of violence will increase. And I'm afraid, ultimately, young people will lose their lives. What I would say to young people is come forward, get help. There is help for you. There is a better life out there for you. You don't have to stay enslaved to these gangs. And to these gang masters, we are coming after you. No, it's going to be me so. As far as I can see it, every sure of here, every one of us right here right now, is loving this life. There's no turning back. If you turn back, you're going back to your boat days. My family is blessed. Their family is blessed. I know his family is blessed. Every family is blessed right now. And on top of that, we're still earning money for ourselves. So there's no going back for me. No, I ain't never going back, brother. This is where the money's at. I want to keep this money. I ain't going for it. I uh, what, you hear that police thing? I uh, yeah, miniature cut stool. Yeah. yeah.